Blobs, popping sounds, stringing and oozing are strong indicators of wet filament. And if that wasn't enough, it can become brittle over time too, ruining your day. And therefore, storing them correctly is key to good 3D printing results. At least, I thought that until I worked on the review of the Fixed Dry NT1 Double. One day, I wanted to change the filament I lazily had left in the 3D printer. I recognized that the filament in the PTFE tube had cracked into parts. Something that happened for the first time to me in all the years of 3D printing. So, I removed it to get my other filament loaded moisture in and the brittleness of filament is a result of bad storage conditions. But as we will see during this video, some filaments already come moist out of the box, causing quite some problems. Knowing that a filament dryer could restore moist filament, increasing quality and strength, I never had tried it to restore brittle filament. So let's see how bad wet filament really is for 3D print quality and if there's a way to restore brittle filament to a better condition. A good reason to try out the Fixed Dry NT1 Double, which was provided for review to me. I sacrificed one factory new spool for each PLA, PTG, TPU, nylon and PCTG filament for the test. I started printing a temperature tower and a retraction test for each filament, which were just loaded fresh from the sealed bag. Then I used the best print temperature and retraction given by those prints to print a Kali Dragon with each to get a baseline. Like the famous but all too often seen 3D Benchy, the Kali Dragon allows you to evaluate the quality of the print. It has regions to check for overhangs, ghosting, smoothness and details, as well as small perimeters and string. After that, I weighed the fresh filaments. Though my first idea submerging the filaments in water for a day looks cool, it has some drawbacks. The molecules of the liquid water don't penetrate the filament very well because of the hydrogen bonds. A more scientific method was needed. In water vapor, the water molecules are no longer connected and move individually, quickly and freely. As a result, they have a greater chance of penetrating the filament. That's why I use this humidifier and put the filament with it in this box. The humidity stayed all the time between 86 and 92%. Then I check and note the weight change every hour for 24 hours, except overnight. The table shows how much moisture each of the materials has absorbed. Before printing the test model, the spools were weighed again. Then I printed another Kali Dragon with each. After printing, I weighed the spools again to get a comparative value for the next step. Drying in the fixed dry NT1 double filament dryer. Before drying, let's see if my brittle filament can be revived. I found a second PLA spool that suffered from getting brittle too. Good that I can dry them together. I put them into the dryer at 55 degrees Celsius for 6 hours. Before taking a look at the fixed dry NT1 double in more detail, a quick ad from this video sponsor PCBWay. PCBWay recently added a new option, UV printing, which allows colorful images to be printed on your PCB, giving you even more creative ways to make your PCBs individual and stand out from the masses. If you need high quality, professional looking PCBs for your electronics project, get 5 PCBs for just $5. Just enter the size, the quantity and the number of layers to get your instant quote from PCBWay or upload your PCB directly from KiCad using the KiCad PCB Way plugin. Go through and adjust the offered options like thickness, solder mask, silk screen color and more to suit your needs. With their assembly service you can even let them populate your board with parts so you don't have to. Then place your order to receive your PCBs within a few business days. Besides that, PCBWay offers a lot more services like CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication and their 3D printing service. Check out PCBWay for your next project. The filament dryer comes in a nice box containing a top cover, a power cord, the base, a manual and a shroud to cover the heater outlet. The cover has 10 rubber sealed outlet holes to feed through the filament when using the dryer when printing. The seals are made to fit a PTFE tube tightly. Great for printing materials that are susceptible to moisture, feeding it from the dryer all the way up to the hot end almost without getting air contact. Using the dryer is very simple and explained concisely in the given manual. <laughs> the German translation of shroud is funny. They translated it to Leichentuch, which is burial shroud in English. Though in newer manuals that should have been corrected. 
At the bottom of the base is a 110 volt PTC heater with a fan that blows the heated air into the dryer. There's also a temperature and humidity sensor. To prevent the high heat coming from the PTC from damaging the filament close to it, place the shroud over it. The shroud guides the hot air to the sides and causes it to circulate evenly around the filament spools, a simple but effective solution. The four rollers allow the spools to rotate freely while having them in the dryer during a print. They are width allowed to put either two standard spools of up to one kilogram or one big spool of up to three kilogram in the dryer. Great if you are doing a huge 3D print and have to switch to another spool mid-print. The top cover has a nice tight fit. It has holes through which the humid air gets out of the dryer. After plugging in the power cord, a tap on the on button turns on the fixed dryer anti one double. It shows the current relative humidity and the temperature in the bright display. Using the hamburger menu button, you can enter and cycle through the settings, which are as simple as choosing the target temperature and the desired drying time. After which, the fixed dry NT1 double turns off the heater. Drying times can be set up to 48 hours. When setting the time to the maximum of 48.59, it enters infinite drying mode. Some filaments are more prone to moisture intake than others. With the materials having different properties, they require different temperatures and times for drying. While the drying time is just a rough suggestion, the drying temperature of a filament shall always stay well below the glass transition temperature. You can look it up in the manufacturer's datasheet. You should never exceed the maximum drying temperature for the filament to prevent damaging it. The table shown gives common values for different materials. Staying 10 degrees Celsius below that should be safe to dry the filament without causing harm to it. To save time, I combined the ones with similar drying parameters. That way I know which filaments can be put into the dryer together. It is handy that two spools can be dried simultaneously as long as the temperatures and times needed to dry them are close enough. A huge time saver. I put the PCTG and nylon into the dryer at 70 degrees Celsius for about 8 hours, after which I weight them. Since both materials are set to acquire moisture from the air, even during printing quickly, I fed them through a PTFE tube from the dryer to the print head and printed the test model from each one again. I repeated the procedure with TPU and PETG at 55 degrees Celsius and finally peel A at 45 degrees Celsius for 6 hours. I weighed the dried PETG after 6 hours and started printing the model while leaving the TPU in the dryer for another 6 hours before weighing and printing from it. Before looking at the numbers, let's take a close look at the prints from the fresh, moist and dried spool. Can you spot which is which? How many did you get right? Leave it in the comments. The real numbers are very interesting as you can see in the graph. The bars are normalized with the fresh weight being 1. As expected, P12 suffered most with a difference of 9.1 gram between wet and dried, followed by PCTG, PTG, TPU and finally the least affected PLA with only 7.5 gram. I share more in-depth detail, data and graphs on my Patreon. Interestingly, the print quality of TPU suffers most from being moist. Now, how did drying affect the brittleness of my filament? As you can see here, it doesn't snap immediately when being bent. So, it's a slight improvement. For these filaments, I'm lucky and drying removes the snappiness. The takeaway of all the tests is that some filaments need drying even when taken out of a sealed bag. 
This applies to the PETG, TPU, PA12 and PCTG filaments that I use. A lone peel A seems not to be affected that much and could be loaded with all special care, no matter how it has been stored, but gives slightly better results when stored properly as well. And what's the case with brittle filament? Well, from my tests it seems to help a little bit, but I think that it's not guaranteed to work always. What are your experiences with wet or brittle filament and do you have a favorite method to dry and store your filaments? Let me know in the comments. Drying the filament is only the first step. Most filaments contain additives to improve their printing properties which can evaporate over time or due to excessive drying. In this case, even a filament dryer will not be able to save the filament. It is therefore best to pack the filament well after printing, preferably with a small bag of silica gel. If you want to know more, go on and watch this video next. You can further support my ongoing work by subscribing or becoming a member of the Growing 3 Printing Geek community on Patreon or YouTube just for the price of a coffee. Happy 3D printing and see you again soon here on 3D Printing Geek.